What's up everybody? Welcome back to the garage. That's golf cart garage. I am Tim. We are back again. Let me make sure that we're rolling here on Facebook. Yep, everything's good. Already got people in the room. Kurt, here we are, yep. Captain Jim, what's up and on, Captain Jim? 78 and rainy at the North Carolina coast. Kevin Fry, hello, beautiful 70 degrees in Southwest Pennsylvania. Larry Consley, welcome to the room, Larry. Hey, Tim, 76 here in Southern Indiana. 76, that sounds good. We got some good weather here too. Uh, Greg Elliott, another beautiful day in Bristol. Ricky Smith, hey everyone, nice day here in Central North Carolina. Freeman Strategy Group, welcome to the room, Freeman Strategy Group. Thank everybody for coming. This is Thursday, the 21st. If you're watching us on Thursday the 21st at 12 noon central time, then you're watching us live. We're live right now, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, myself and guess who's here? Where's he at? Can you see him? Dynaman. There he is with pretty nails and everything. <laughs> Me and Dino, or Dino and I actually, we both work for Golf Cart Garage. I don't know if, if Golf Cart Garage really realizes that or not, but we actually both work there. So thank everybody for showing up today. We're gonna to go over some regular questions. Uh, let me watch, let me run these social media links. If you'd like to follow us on Facebook and YouTube, please do so, like and subscribe, that always helps. But if you'd like to follow us on another platform, there I'm running those links right now. Uh, Tic Tac and Instagram uh, gram links. Stephen Coon. Howdy, Tim from Florida. Beautiful sunshine, 88 degrees. What's going on, Stephen Coon? Kurt Bauer, star of the show. You're talking about Dino, yeah. Dino Man is back. He's back with his nails and everything from the spa. Okay. This is Thursday the 21st. I said that, didn't I? Fish Breath. What's up, Fish Breath? Overcast, California. Thanks for coming back, Fish Breath. I remember your name. It's easy to remember. Let me check Facebook and make sure everything's cool. Rusty Brinkley on Facebook says, looks like Dino got fed. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. He got fed. I'm going to just leave it at that. Okay, we're gonna get started on the regular questions here. I'm sure there'll be some others pop up. Question number one. Oh, by the way, the garage is now open. Our EasyGo TXT48 has new batteries this season and a new charger. We used it all season. Now recently, it loses power under load, like going uphill. What can I check to diagnose the problem? Well, I understand that you got new batteries this season, but losing power under load, that is anybody that is gonna help try to diagnose that car, the first place they're gonna go is the batteries if you're losing power under load. So you're gonna, you're gonna, do, uh, you're gonna do a load test sort of on each battery and see if you've got one that's dropping out or see if you have a bad sale. You're just gonna hook your voltmeter to a battery and go drive your cart and monitor the voltage and make sure it doesn't drop down really, really far and do that on every one of your batteries and see if you can find one that drops down way further than the rest of them and that could be your culprit. Catherine O'Brien Freeman on Facebook says, whatever, I think she was saying that about my comment about Dino getting fed. <laughs> Rock dog, what's going on, man? Keith and Chris from Nashville are tuned in. Sunday and 81 degrees here. 
That is a, sounds pretty nice. 82 and sunny in Athens. That's probably about what I got going on here, Rock Dog. About 82 and, and sunny. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. I, was, I like hot weather. I like, the, I like boating season. You know, I do. But, man, once you get into that August where you've got those really, really hot temperatures, it really is nice when you get to about September and you get a, you get a, uh, you know, a little bit cooler temperatures. It's, it, it shows you how much that heat that heat gets old. It does. It, it gets old being getting too hot. I'm talking about 100 degree heat. You know, that, that gets old. And then September comes around and makes you realize how much you appreciate it. At least it does to me. I mean, all right. Let's go to number two. This is from Ron. Ron has a 1989 36 volt carp. What gauge wire is used from the resistor group assembly to the V-glide? Can I use flexible welding cable? The stock wire from the resistor group to the V-glide is the same gauge as your stock battery wires, which is six gauge. That's a six gauge wire. There's a bunch of six gauge wire that hook to the V-glide and go to the resistor group. Uh, and can you use flexible welding cable? Sure you can. If you have access to flexible welding cable, that's even better. That's, even, that's actually a, a more high quality cable than regular golf cart cables because mul it's multi-stranded with very, very small strands, so there's more packed inside that insulation, and it's easier to work with because it's flexible. That's exactly what I have on my car. I got two gauge flexible welding cable on my lifted car, but uh, you don't have to go with a bigger gauge. Just flexible, six gauge flexible welding cable would be fine, and it's a lot easier to work with. Norman Lucky says, no rain in two months. Where is that at, Norman? No rain in two months, because we've had very little over the last two months here. Uh, Fish Press says he's looking at buying a 2018 Club Car Precedent with 22 batteries, 2022 batteries that are dead. Can they be brought back? Hmm, uh, it's possible. It definitely would be worth a try since they are only, uh, you know, a year to a year and a half or so old, something like that. I would definitely try to bring them back. Uh, I'm sure you could, I'm sure you've heard me talk about how you can try that, you know, depending on what batteries they are. But yeah, I would give it a try on batteries that new, Two, 2022 batteries. Yeah, give it a shot. You can't hurt anything. Uh, Put them on a, if they're 12 volt batteries, you see it's a 2018 Club Car Precedent, probably has four 12 volts in it, or it's got six eights, one or the other. Uh, if they're 12s, then you can just uh, get them up, you know, with pretty much any type of deep cycle uh, 12 volt automotive charger, you can try to get the voltage up. If they're eights, you're going to have to either get an eight volt charger, which believe it or not, there is a such thing as an eight volt charger, but not everybody has one, they're not very common. Or you can use a 12 volt charger and put a timer on it just in, so don't walk away and leave it on there because that's not really what you're supposed to do. But you could do it for like 30 minutes with a 12 volt charger on each one. Try to get them up to the point where your regular charger will, will come on. And once you get to that point, you know, don't worry with them anymore and see what you can do with them. But yeah, it would be, it'd be worth it for batteries that only that old. Norman says that was in Mississippi. That was a uh, no rain in two months. Yeah, that's, that's a, uh, that's probably, we've had some rain in the last two months, but not enough, not enough. We are, we're pretty dry here right now. Rain is here today on the eastern shore of Virginia. Rich Eastman. What's up, Rich? David Ross on YouTube. I have a 48 volt 2013 club car precedent. 2013, so that means purchased 48 volt lithium battery installed and worked, plugged in charger I had for acid battery and the next day the golf cart would not work well okay most lithium companies recommend using their own charger i'll put that out there first before i before i continue to read most of the lithium companies recommend using their charger all right that's the first thing 
Battery Evo guy said that the charger would work fine. However, I feel that was probably the problem. Can I use the old charger or not? I have done a lot of diagnosis and I feel the controller is fried. It is feeding 48 volts out of the controller to the solenoid. No, it's, it's not feeding 48 volts out of the controller to the solenoid. The solenoid is feeding 48 volts out of the solenoid to the controller. That's, it goes the other way. Solenoid toward the controller. All right, then the controller toward the motor. So it's, something happened there. But what, uh, what battery company said that you could use your lead acid battery charger and an onboard computer by the way because you've got a 2013 club car that has an onboard computer that would be kind of confusing when you, you put a lithium in there that to, it'd be confusing to the onboard computer because the voltages are going to be uh, different than the lead acid voltages fish breast says that car had six eights in it yeah so you're going to have to either get an eight volt charger or use a 12 volt but be careful using that 12 volt like i said don't walk away from it holy heck i'm in the middle of moving oh you're in the middle of moving 100 yards from one spot to another craig like you said with the golf cart yep fish breast says thanks okay battery evo Hmm. I don't know, David. It's a. Uh, I think you're probably onto something. I think uh, you, that it, it did not like that lead acid charger. Uh, I don't know. We don't sell that battery, uh, so I'm not sure if they have, you know, how strict the BMS is on that lithium setup. The BMS could have put it in limp mode, could have shut it down when it, when it recognized that charger, you know, putting out different than, than a lithium profile. Uh, not sure what could have happened there. It would be, but it's going to be something to do with your battery for sure. Norman Lucky says, what's the going price switching to lithium? I've heard prices, Norm, uh, we, if you do it with us, the ones that we sell, you're going to be anywhere from $25 to $3,500 by the time you get through, depending on what, which setup you go with and, and which company you go with. I have heard prices from other people that are less expensive. I've heard prices of 1,800 for, you know, for something like that. But I've also heard prices of four grand, you know, depending on what setup you want. So it depends, I would go, if I do plan to do lithium. I do plan to go lithium on my golf cart because this needs a battery job right now. I am going to, I'm going to switch it to lithium. I, I still haven't decided which one I'm going with on it. I don't know. I'm probably going to go with one of the ones we sell, obviously, at Golf Cart Garage, which is either going to be Eco batteries or Dakota batteries. Uh, we even sell Trojan. Trojan even has some lithium batteries that I'm considering. So I'm not exactly sure which direction I'm going to go. Uh, I'm not going to worry about cost as much. I'm actually going to worry about feedback that I get from you guys. Like uh, I, the Eco battery bundle sounds good to me, but I, I haven't gotten enough feedback on it yet. I've gotten some good reviews, gotten some good feedback on it, but I want to get some more. Probably wait till the end of this year before I do that. Let me check over here on Facebook. William Moore on Facebook. I made it. What's up, William Moore? Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. We're on question number three over here on the regular question. Uh, there's not, David uh, Ross, there's not a real good bench test for that controller. What, what you're gonna do is, is what most golf cart shops do to to do that is they eliminate everything else like we were talking about earlier your if you is your solenoid clicks that means you're getting power to your solenoid and then your solenoid if it's clicking if your solenoid's good and it's clicking then that means it's powering up your controller if you're not getting anything out of your controller then uh it's you know the controller would be bad now i forgot exactly what car we were talking about david what were we talking? Oh, 48, 2003. Okay. Well, David, also keep this in mind. Your car can have the fault codes read by a club car dealer. They have a special computer that will plug into your car and you can read the fault codes. If you're nervous about just throwing money at a certain part, then that fault code reader may 
put you, may, you give you a little more confidence if it says that it's a bad motor. We can, you can also look up shunt wound motor test and you can isolate the motor and do a motor test on it. Shunt wound motor test. You know, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that'll show you how to do that. You basically connect an F terminal to an A terminal and then an F1 to A1 and then F2 to A2, two separate connections. And then you run 12 volts to those two spots and see if the thing spins. But anyway, most golf cart shops, that's what they're going to do. They're going to eliminate everything up to the solenoid, but if the solenoid's clicking, then everything up to the solenoid is eliminated already. And then the only thing behind the solenoid is the controller and the motor. So then they would eliminate the motor, and then that leaves the controller in the middle. Uh, Fish Breath says, if I put a 600 amp Navitas controller in, would I need to upgrade the solenoid? It is recommended by Navitas to do so, Fish Breath, yes. It is recommended by Navitas, and it is also recommended by Alltrax. If you upgrade to their controller, they recommend you upgrading your solenoid. Captain Jim, Tim, I have a 2013 Club Car 48 volt. I changed to the Allied lithium battery. Now cart will only go in reverse. Even in forward, it goes in reverse. Uh-oh. Well, I can assure you this, uh, Jim. Captain Jim, I can assure you this. Just by changing to the lithium battery had nothing to do with that issue. That's a completely different issue. There's, there's, that had nothing to do with it. I mean, uh, I mean, you only have, did you go with the one single allied lithium battery? You only had, you know, two spots, you know, to hook everything back up, the, the uh, positive and the negative cable. So that's gonna be a separate issue. And in your cart, a club car 48 volt cart, 2013, if you have a run, oh, it's a precedent, okay, so it means you do have a run tow switch, so that means that your controller is the device that is responsible for switching directions. I understand you got to push a button, you know, to switch, but the controller is actually the device that, that switches it electronically to make your cart go backwards and forwards, so I would be concerned about that. Reggie watching Candy America Tech. What's up, man? Hello, Tim. They have me on the road. I'm in South Carolina. What's up, Reggie? South Carolina. Bruce from Westfield, Wisconsin. What's going on, Bruce? Okay, Captain Jim, you went with the one battery. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That switching, just switching to the lithium, had, that shouldn't have had any effect on what you're describing that your symptom is. So something happened during the switch, is what I'm saying. Something different. Number three, easy go Textron. It will go backwards but not forward. Does this every once in a while? What could be causing this and how to fix it? Number three. Well, like we were just talking about how in a precedent, the controller is responsible for forward and reverse. Well, in a, in a easy, you just said easy go Textron, so you, depending on which electrical system you had, if it had a run toe switch, then controller is responsible for forward and reverse. But if not, then that means you have a mechanical forward and reverse switch and you could have an issue right there. Uh, I've told some, I've told customers uh, with success in the past that if you have the mechanical one and your car was, quits going in one direction, then grab that, handle for your forward and reverse switch and put pressure on it in different directions and different angles put a little pressure on it with your hand and see if anything changes you might find your issue right there it might be in your mechanical forward and reverse switch not passing contact having a loose contact all kinds of things can go wrong jeffrey what's up jeffrey good afternoon jeff i was running late troubleshooting an old G19. Jerry Kelly, what's going on, Jerry Kelly? Captain Jim says, thanks. If it is the controller, I think I'll put the Navita 600 in. What do you think? I think that's the way to do it. I, I say, this is what I tell all my customers. They ask me, do, should I put in a Navita 600 or, or 600 amp controller? 
on my stock motor? Well, sure, it's, it's not going to hurt a thing. It's a misconception, people think, just because they put in a 600 amp controller that it's going to put 600 amps to the motor. That is not true. The motor is only going to use whatever it needs. It's only, you know, you, you do have 600 amps available, but you'd have to, you'd have to tie the cart to a tree or a stump or something and just punch it and just sit there and to, before that motor would even get to that point, to, to needing that 600 amps that it has available. So no, that wouldn't hurt a thing. If you can afford the 600 amp, you'll be ready for any upgrade in the future. Pocona Lake, Pennsylvania is where Jeffrey is. Pocona Lake. See, now Rock Dog is acting like a mechanic now. God, I, have, I have come across people that, that forgot to put the cart back in the run. Uh, you know, the cart wouldn't run after a battery swap, and then they figured out they... They, uh, they forgot to put the cart back in and run. So that's it. That is one of my questions that I'd ask occasionally. Rusty Brinkley on Facebook. Any idea why a 2012 precedent battery pack would arc when connecting wires with the switch in tow mode? Had this happen on two different customers' cars, both cars had voltage reducers, couldn't figure out what would be drawing current. Well. Rusty, isn't there a resistor across the two large posts of the solenoid? And that could explain the arc. So in other words, it's, it's still connected a little bit. You know, if there's a resistor across there, even in tow, if, there, if there's a resistor across, then there's power still going past there. Not as much, not full power, but there is some. That's true, Rock Dog. It doesn't always cause problems, but it, it has. Yeah, it, it has for me too with customers that didn't know anything about turning that switch. So you're absolutely right. Number four is where we're at over here on the regular questions. It's from Robin. My golf cart batteries are dying all the time. Every time I unplug it, I would like to know your thoughts before I purchase new batteries. Well, you're going to have to uh, get a load test done, or you're going to have to get a, give me a little more information than that. Now, you could, if you take it to a golf, call up a golf cart shop. Ask them, do they have a discharge machine? Tell them that you would like to get a discharge test run on your battery pack. Now, now they're going to charge you for that, but that will answer every question you need to know about whether or not you need to get a new battery pack. Because what that's going to do is it's going to discharge your battery pack all at the same time, all your batteries at the same time, while a timer's going off, your timer clicking down. And depending on how long your battery pack lasts on that timer, they can tell you exactly how good it is, what, you, what kind of runtime you can expect. If there is one bad battery in the pack, they can spot it during the test. If they know what they're doing, they, it's easy to, to spot. So that might be an answer to your situation there. Got stuff popping up on my screen, blocking my chat window. Chance to see you live. I've been troubleshooting. Oh, oh, glad to have a chance to see you live. I have been troubleshooting myself since. Uh, 78 Arctic Cat Tech. Point Jeffrey. Cool. Cool, Jeffrey. Thank you for stopping by live, man. You can come here as often as you would like. Uh, we're here Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 noon Central Time. Every Tuesday and Thursday, twice a week. David Taylor from Amelia Island, Florida, 80 degrees. Nice. Nice.
Rusty Brinkley says thanks. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for the question. I hope I was helpful. Number five is where we're at over here. I have what I believe is a 96 TXT manufacturer's code is H1696. Yes, that is a 96 with a Robin engine. Okay, so we're talking about a gas car. I have a spark problem. I'll, it'll start right up and after 10 to 15 minutes of constant running, it warms up, it dies, and then there's no spark. Let it cool for 20 minutes and start again and run until it gets warm again. I'm thinking it's a coil issue, but thinking of replacing the igniter also. Our SKU EG, ENG-116 and ENG-111, the compatible parts for my cart. Thanks. Well, I looked up the parts, uh, the, the ENG parts, and those are the correct parts. Yeah, if that's what you want to try next, uh, that would, those are the correct parts for your cart. You have the two-cycle Robin, not two-cycle, two-cylinder. You have the two-cylinder Robin four-cycle engine, but it's got two cylinders, two pistons in the coal. It's got a two spark plug wires, so yes, those were the correct parts, so you're on the right track. Number six, when I was charging the batteries before the charger showed a full charge, I could hear bubbling coming from the batteries. Is this normal? Uh, most, most likely that is normal, most likely. Bubbling is not uh, anything unusual, especially a small amount of bubbling toward the end of the charge cycle, like after the battery has been charged and right before it gets fully charged or right at the, the end before when the charger's trying to decide whether or not to shut off or not, some bubbling at that time could be absolutely normal. Now, older batteries are gonna do that more than, than newer batteries. Purchase as much as I can from you, and remember, I'm C. Jeffrey. Well, thank you, Jeffrey. Plowboy, what's going on, man? Checking in from southeast Wisconsin. What's going on? Plowboy was a uh, one of the bag of swag winners. I remember the winners' names, you know, usually. Thanks for stopping by. Just checking on Facebook here. Yep, we're still rolling good. Okay. We're on number seven. That's where we're at. My forward and reverse switch has a loose stud. Turns inside the switch assembly on the white wire. The other wire stud is solid. Does this need to be replaced? The cart will not go forward or back. It clicks when I press the pedal. Well, you didn't tell me exactly what car we're talking about, but for, there was a couple of things that you said in the question that makes me think I know what car we're talking about. Uh, when you said it turns inside the switch assembly on the white wire. All right, that makes me think that we're talking about a series wound club car. Because a series wound club car has two wires that go to the forward and reverse switch. One of them is white and it goes to the solenoid. But the spots where they are mounted are actually, they're actually what I guess what you would call them would be pivoting studs. In other words, when you turn the switch, those wires stay still and the switch turns and they pivot. So in other words, they're mounted solid to the stud, but the stud itself pivots. To, to, so you won't break the wire, you know, it just stays still. So it sounds like what you're talking about is normal. A lot of people, I have seen people that were confused about that. They thought the wire was loose, but as, as long as it's tight onto the stud where it's mounted, then everything's fine. The stud itself is supposed to pivot. I hope I, hope I was clear on that, what I just said. And I think that's what car you're talking about. Number eight is the regular questions that we are on. I have a 2004 Easygo TXT PDS 36. 
I think I need more power to carry a load up a sustained 10 to 15 degree hill a quarter to a half a mile. I haven't attempted it yet. It's in another location and I'm considering a powertrain upgrade to be able to do so. Would the Navitas 440 AC upgrade work? I know I'll need to swap the battery setup and go to 48 new charge meter, but otherwise, would that kit work after I update my batteries? Absolutely, the answer to that would be absolutely it would work and it would be an awesome kit to do. And if you need anything, anything more as far as uh, detailed instructions or step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it, plug in 36 volt lit, uh, Navitas AC 36 volt swap on YouTube. Plug that in on YouTube. All kinds of videos come up where people have done that. And they've done it to 36 volt cars, they've done it to 48 volt cars, but you could probably find your exact car that someone has done that to and they've done the Navita swap. So yes, that, that would definitely help. That's like the ultimate setup uh, nowadays is the, is the AC Navita swap. There's some competition coming, but uh, because uh, Alltrax now has AC controllers too, so I, I would imagine that Alltrax is going to be coming out with some stuff, some other stuff. Number nine. I have a, two, a 2020 Express EFI that rides like a tank. It's really rough. I'm curious, what can I do or swap out to make the ride a bit more enjoyable. There's really only a couple of things you can do to soften up a ride on a car. One thing is that you, if it's got like a four passenger kit on the back, then it's, then it's likely that it might have heavy duty springs on the back. Change those back to stock, you know, if, if it does. That's one thing you can do. But other than that, there's, you gotta understand the the stiffness of a golf cart relies on the springs. It's not necessarily the shocks. I mean, the shocks on most golf carts do almost nothing. The, the springs is what is giving you your suspension, your up and down movement. So, and if they're stiff, then you're gonna have a rough ride. So other than, other than like swapping from a heavy duty spring to a normal leaf spring, the only thing you can really do is adjust your air pressure and your tires. I mean, the, the air pressure written on the side of the tire is most likely going to be the maximum recommended air pressure. That's the max pressure. It doesn't say you can't go, you, you can't run less. So run a little bit less, maybe give you a little bit more cushion. 29 watching and 10 thumbs up. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, sir. Someone needs to release a Higher horsepower motor for the RXV. Yeah, that's true. There's not a lot as far as the, the motor for a RXV goes. Uh, most people just put that, that Navitas uh, controller in there and they just go with that on the stock motor. Okay, number 10. This is going to be the last scheduled question. Any recommendation on tires for the wet, rainy side of Hawaii? Well, well, first you gotta, you have to decide: do you need tires for asphalt, wet asphalt, or do you need tires for mud? You know, and is is that what you're looking for? Uh, there's 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 lots of tires you know out there, lots of different. Uh, different degrees of aggressiveness, you know, as far as uh, starting from asphalt all the way up to some kind of really heavy duty mud tire that you could put on there. So it just depends on what kind of conditions you're talking about. Okay, that was the last scheduled question. Let me run the social media links one more time. If you would like to follow us on any other platform besides Facebook and YouTube, uh, then you can follow us on the other ones. So there's a TikTok and Instagram links right there. I'm running those on the screen. If you would like to schedule a gearheads on demand call with me, 
with me personally, where I've talked to you one-on-one -on, -one on the phone about your golf cart issue. I might be able to help you out, might be able to steer you in the right direction. You have a little bit more time with me. Sometimes it's hard to, to get into the details, you know, in the chat because we got a lot of people in here now. Uh, if you need, a, if you feel like you need a one-on-one -on -one time with me, there's a link in the description to take you to the scheduling page, and then you can schedule an appointment, and I'll call you. you know, I'll, I, whatever time you pick, that's convenient. If you can't wait, then catch me here. You know, we're here live every Tuesday and Thursday, and we try to get some of these questions out. We try to get them solved if we can. Yeah, uh, tire PSI, a lot of times it's the tire max bead seating. Yes, I understand. Yep, you're correct, Jeff. Yeah. I found the five solenoids you told me about. Can I swap them around to see which one are bad? Harold Cook said that. Uh, well, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go through all that trouble, Harold. Take your, your voltmeter, put it on the first solenoid. Normal operation, if we're talking about a five-solenoid system cart, I mean, I'm assuming that's what we're talking about. Normal operation would be that you push that accelerator pedal just a little bit. You should hear, boom, you should hear one solenoid click and no movement. That should be the first solenoid, the one all the way on the driver's side. You should have the, your voltmeter on the two small posts of that solenoid. Once it clicks, then you should see the full battery pack voltage at the two small posts and the car should not move because if it does move, that means that wasn't that solenoid that clicked, it was another solenoid. So that first solenoid is bad, is what I'm saying. It's either bad or the micro switch inside that little silver box is bad that is activating that solenoid, it's one or the other. So it's kind of a, like I used to do it just because I'd like to be fancy, I'd put five voltmeters, I'd hook up five voltmeters with alligator clips and have the, the rear end raised off the ground. I'd have alligator clip five voltmeters on every solenoid. Every voltmeter was hooked to the small post of every solenoid. And then I could sit there and press the accelerator pedal and watch the first one click, boom, full voltage. Push a little more, boom, watch the second one click, the third one click, the fourth, and on down the line to the fifth one until I, had, until I knew every micro switch was working and every solenoid was being activated and it was actually making a difference in speed. Tim, did you get to see comments sent to GCG? Kurt, I'm, I'm glad you reminded me. I, I meant to say something. I was going to ask you, didn't, didn't you send something, uh, didn't you send uh, some kind words about myself and GCG to the, to the company? Because uh, it, I know it said Kurt. I can't remember if it was, but I'm glad you reminded me. And the answer is yes. We, I did get that. I did see it. Not only did I see it, it was posted on the on our inner office uh, instant message system, everybody saw it. So thank you very much, Kurt. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. That's uh, we have a little thing at Golf Cart Garage. When anytime anybody gets some type of accolade or something, we post it, and everybody in the company sees it. So it's a it's a you know it's a good thing. And so thank you very much for what you said. William Moore asks, should you rotate your tires? Uh, well, see, I have never had that issue, but I have done way more off-road than I have asphalt. So I would not think, I would think that it would be very possible that asphalt could eat up some tires a lot more than off-road stuff. Most of my golf cart experience has been off-road honestly i don't have I, I never had the need to drive on asphalt uh, they, you know wasn't they weren't street legal where i was at uh, the speed limit was too high so i never got to use them they're not street legal here so most of my stuff is just as a work cart and i've never had to worry about tire rotation i have heard customers talk about their their golf carts having unusual wear and and they would switch the rear tires to the front and all of that so I would say it just depends on your situation, but if your situation is uh, 75 off and 25 asphalt, I probably wouldn't worry about it. 
I mean, it just just keep an eye on your tires for, for wear. You know, that, that's how I would judge whether or not they needed to be rotated or not. Maybe lag in the refresh. Yeah, it could be. It, it could be lag. It, you know, maybe in a, after the because uh, uh, I can tell you, I can tell you right now, like Facebook is behind, so there's some lag going on there too. So yeah, that that's. Uh, William Moore says it's strictly on road. Well, like, like I was saying, strictly on road, it's very possible that you could you know wear out a tire more than off road would. So keep an eye on them for wear is what I would do. I wouldn't say, you know, there's no way I can know how many miles or anything that it would be. It would just be a visual thing to me. I would just look at the front and see how, if they're wearing differently than the rear or vice versa and then rotate accordingly. Okay, the title of this episode was what wire gauge to use. Well, and uh, we talked about that earlier with the V-Glide. It was that V-Glide question. And that was six gauge wire that all the, the V-Glide question to the resistor group. But most golf cars from the factory, the stock wiring that connects all the batteries, your main power wires, that most of the time that's six gauge, six gauge wire. There's lots of different six gauge wire that you could use. And we talked about flexible welding cable is, is a real good one. That would be my preferred wire to use would be flexible welding cable. We ran the social media. Let's run the coupon. Let's run this coupon. Go to golfcartgarage.com and use coupon code to get 5% off, by the way, to get 5% off of your parts that you order. Use coupon code TIM14, TIM14 at checkout at Golf Cart Garage. This uh, code expires on October the 6th. That's to get 5% off. Also, if you would like, to buy a hat, bam, look at there. Got links in the description that'll take you right to them. Get you a tan one, a blue one, a green one, or another blue one, or navy blue. There's links in the description, hot links, that take you right to the hats if you'd like to buy one. We will give a hat away here occasionally, and we got another one coming up. Uh, not sure exactly when, might be next time, but I'm not going to say for sure yet. So it's not going to be next time, but it might be the time after that. I'll have to check the dates on it. Kirk says he needs some GCG stickers to advertise down here. Plenty of golf carts that need to know more about GCG. Kirk, I'm sure we could probably arrange that if you'd like some stickers. We can probably arrange that. I'll see what I can do. How about that, Kurt? Thumbs up showed 19, then dropped to one. Hmm. Chevy Man says he's got plenty of welding cable two gauge. Yeah, that's, that's what I have. Flexible welding cable two gauge is what I have on my, on my lifted cart. Mike Irwin says nice looking hats. They are, they're, they're pretty cool hats. I don't think it works like that, Craig. I'm pretty sure that they have to activate the code in order for it to work. But thanks for trying to outthink the system, though. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's clever. If you have any suggestions for products or, I don't know, anything that you think that you could make, anything that we could do better, let us know. Here's some contact information. Let us know. Either let us know in the chat or give us a call. Send us an email to the, to the email address shown there. Uh, anything that you think that we could do better or that we could be better at. We try to do as good as we possibly can, and we do a really good job, I think. Everybody here, everybody at Golf Cart Garage is an amazing team member, and we have a really good team of people. So we do pretty good, but we're still open to suggestions. So contact us right there if you have anything. Let me check Facebook one more time. Lynn Scrappy on Facebook. What's up? Nice mix of questions today. Yes, it was, Lynn. Thank you for stopping by, man.
Greg says when clear coat dries, he'll send some pics. Okay, cool. Yeah. Send me some pics. Well, we're about to see something right now. We're going to send a pic. We're going to, we're going to show a pic here on, for the let's see segment. I did the contact graphics. So the only thing left is let's see. So to introduce the new picture today, let's see, let's see some carts. Well, this one is actually a little different. I know we featured, uh, I know we featured Big Mike's cart. You know, I showed some pictures of Big Mike's cart. Well, Big Mike sent me this picture, and I think he sent it to me because of what you had said uh, last time, Kirk. When Kirk, when, remember when you said something about uh, you just got, uh, you got me on the big screen, and, and I was huge? Well, Big Mike sent this picture. You ready? Bam. Look up there in the corner. <laughs> It's me on the big screen in Big Mike's garage. Nice garage too, by the way, Mike. I don't, I don't know if you're in the room today. If you were, if you are, I don't remember you saying anything. But uh, he's got me on the big screen too, Kirk. Just like you said. I thought that was cool. You don't have to show me. You, you know, if you want to send me some pictures, it doesn't have to be. Uh, of carts. It can be of your garage or your setup. I mean, this is a really nice garage. It's very similar to the one that I'm in right now, actually. Uh, with I'm, I'm actually, my computer is sitting on a bar similar to that, and I do have a refrigerator right beside me and a toolbox and behind me and all over the place. And I've got a big screen, you know, the big screen in the background with, has a golf cart garage thing on it, so it's very similar. Kevin Fry says beer in that freezer. That's most likely. Well, I'll take a lunch break for fast moving. Thanks for the entertainment. Love the show gear. This is a nice shop. That's a nice shop, Big Mike. Huge, yep. Yeah. I posted this picture on the for the office to see too earlier today. Freeman Strategy Group, looking good. Yeah, I thought that was a cool picture. See, I, I don't look skinny there, you know. Don't look like I'm starving because I'm so big on the, on the screen. Check Facebook over here. No, we're good over there. Yeah, there is some lag for sure. Yeah, that's a nice man cave Mike has. Okay, we did the let's see, we did the contact, we did the mic, we did the questions, we did the social. I think we are good. See a few decals in that pic. Yeah, he's got, I showed this pic of him last, uh, this pic of his car. He's got a, right there, I don't know if you can see it, uh, um, right behind his front tire, he's got some golf cart garage stickers right there. But we're gonna see if we can hook uh, Kurt up with something like that too. All right, guys. Today, it's, that's going to be about it. It's, uh, today is Thursday. I'm off tomorrow. And I am going to enjoy this good weather this weekend, this better weather. A little bit cooler weather. And I will be back on Tuesday, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12 noon Central Time. And like I said, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do. It helps everybody. Uh, helps everybody and continue to, to grow and helps golf cart garage and helps me keep a job because I do like my job and I appreciate all you showing up all you guys showing up every every Tuesday and Thursdays thank you very much I will see everybody on uh, Tuesday the garage is now closed <laughs>